Hello, I'm Ken Carter. I serve as the resident bishop of the Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church. Thank you for worshiping God with us in this way. This worship service is a gift from the appointed cabinet uh, of our annual conference. It's intended to be a gift that will allow uh, for a Sabbath rest for our pastors, our worship leaders, and those who make our worship experiences possible all across the annual conference. Uh, this, has been, this has been a challenging season because of the effects of, of the COVID-19, the coronavirus, and also as we have uh, experienced and as we live through uh, the reality of the racial uh, injustice and trauma uh, that has been visited upon us uh, and to which as faithful Christians we continue to respond. Uh, and so thank you for worshiping uh, today. Uh, and at this time I'd like uh, to introduce the appointed cabinet of the Florida Annual Conference. Hello, I'm June Edwards, the superintendent of the North Central District, and I welcome you from Ocala this morning. Hi, my name is Durwood Fauché. I'm the superintendent of the Northwest District. I live in the Tallahassee area, home of Wesley Campus Ministries at Florida State University and Florida A&M University. Dion Hammond coming from the Atlantic Central District on the beaches of the Atlantic Ocean. This is Bob Bouchong from the East Central District and I live in the city of Maitland. Hi, this is Alex Shanks, assistant to the bishop, down by the lake in Lakeland, Florida. Hello from the Gulf Central District office, Candace Lewis, District Superintendent, Largo, Florida. Hi, I'm Dan Jackson, superintendent of the Southwest District. Hi, this is Cynthia Weems in historic Little Havana in Miami, Florida, the Southeast District. Good morning, church. My name is Rini Hernandez, and I come to you from beautiful Lakeland, Florida. Let us pray. Oh God, you are always with us. We occasionally recognize your presence. Wherever we are is holy ground. And so we ask that you would make yourself known to us. Help us to see you and feel you. Help us to be transformed by your presence. Help us to glorify you. And most of all, help us to know uh, that you have come into this world and into our lives in the person of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
forget that you're my true identity. Show me who I am and help me to believe that you have brought me back with the riches of your amazing grace and relentless love. I'm Some familiar words from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 51 from the Message Translation. Generous in love, God, give us grace. Huge in mercy, God, wipe out our bad record. Scrub away our guilt, soak our sins in your laundry. We know how bad we've been. Our sins are staring us down. You are the one, God, we have violated. You've seen it all, seen the full extent of our sin. You have seen all of the facts before us. Whatever you decide, God, it is fair. We've been out of step with you for a long time. In the wrong since before we were born. What you're after is truth from the inside out. Enter us. Conceive a new life, a true life. Soak us in your laundry and we'll come out clean. Scrub us and we'll have a snow white life. Tune in the foot tapping songs. Set those once broken bones to dancing again. Don't look too close at our blemishes, but give us a clean bill of health. God, make a fresh start in us. Shape a Genesis week out of the chaos of our lives. Don't throw us away with the trash or fail to bring your holiness in us. Bring us back from this gray exile and put a fresh wind in our sails. Then give us the job of teaching rebels your way so the lost can find their way home. Commute our sentence, God, the God of our salvation. And then we'll sing anthems of your life-giving ways. Unbutton our lips, dear God, and we'll loose them forth with praise. Going through the motions doesn't please you. A flawless performance is nothing to you. We have learned God worship when our pride was shattered. Heart shattered lives, ready for love, does not for a moment escape God's notice. 
Make Zion the place of your delight. Repair Jerusalem and all of our cities, broken down walls. Then you'll get real worship from us, acts of worship, small and large, including all the bulls they can have on your altar. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you join with me now as we share together in this prayer of confession and words of pardon? Holy and awesome God, we stand in your presence filled with regret for our many sins and failings. Though there is greatness in us and a deep longing for goodness, we have often denied our better selves and refused to hear your voice calling us to rise to the full height of our humanity. For there is a weakness in us as well as strength. Lord, we have seen the weakness of our being in recent days. We have witnessed and experienced the darkness of our world that exists in the sin of racism. It exists within each of us. It exists in our church and it exists in our nation. Forgive us for the ways we have contributed to this sin, Lord. We know it is a disgrace to our faith in you who gives value to all people by breathing life into each person. We confess, Lord, that we have created and we are complicit in systems that uplift some and smother others. Help us, Lord, to change. Help us to dismantle these systems and build new ones that are constructed on your love, your hope, and your dreams for humanity. Let us now offer our personal confession before you, God. The Lord God is merciful and gracious, endlessly and patiently loving and true, showing mercy, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin, and granting pardon. Thanks be to God. Amén. Lectura de la Epístola a los Gálatas, capítulo 5, versículo 22, hasta el capítulo 6, versículo 2. En cambio, el fruto del Espíritu es amor, alegría, paz, paciencia, amabilidad, bondad, fidelidad, humildad, y dominio propio. No hay ley que condene estas cosas. Los que son de Cristo Jesús han crucificado la naturaleza pecaminosa con sus pasiones y deseos. Si el Espíritu nos da vida, andemos guiados por el Espíritu. No dejemos que la vanidad nos lleve a irritarnos y a envidiarnos unos a otros. Hermanos, si alguien es sorprendido en pecado, ustedes que son espirituales deben restaurarlo con una actitud humilde. Pero cuídese cada uno, porque también puede ser tentado. Ayúdense unos a otros a llevar sus cargas y así cumplirán la ley de Cristo. Aquí estás, te debemos mover, te adoraré, te adoraré. Aquí estás, fluyendo en mí, te adoraré, te adoraré.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you today and thank you for the privilege of praying for others. I've been the recipient of others' prayers so often. I understand how powerful intercessory prayer can be. I thank you that through your name, I can come before you and pray with confidence and know that you hear me. I lift up those in our neighborhoods, our towns and cities, and our places of worship. Let us be salt and light pointing others to you. Deepen our love for you. Help us to exemplify you in our faith and in our actions. May our love for you help us to love others and make a difference in our world, especially as we continue our present journey through COVID-19. We pray for our health workers and all on the front lines throughout this pandemic. May we continue to express our sincere gratitude for the work they do to care for the sick and the dying. Finally, we pray for the thousands who have lost their lives. We pray for their loved ones and friends. We pray for all who have suffered and grieved in these uncharted times. May your powerful peace cover and shield their journey. There are so many needs, but you are present in every one. So it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. A reading of 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This segment originally was to be specifically about the importance of Sabbath for pastors and worship leaders. Our pastors and worship leaders across the conference have been navigating a time of anxiety from at least March 15th, the first Sunday when most of our churches chose not to have in-person worship due to the risks related to the pandemic. They have been doing church in much different ways that have required a, a whole lot of learning and a great deal of creative effort. Thank you, pastors and worship leaders, for your faithful work. As we were putting this service together, in relatively quick succession came heavy pieces of news that added another layer to the leadership challenge in this time. As a pastor of color said in one of our district video clergy groups, first there was Brianna, then Ahmad, then George, and something within me broke. Then he began to weep. So how do we address the latest evidence of the lethal virus of racism that has been at the core of the cumulative relationship that our nation has had with people of color for over 400 years? Do you remember the first commandment given by God? Well, of course you do. You know it's in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. God said, let there be light and there was light. How might that little verse that sets the stage for the story of God's interaction with creation apply in this particular context? 
What does God bring to light out of the darkness of the brutal experience of our most recent racial divide that is fueled by white privilege, racial profiling, police brutality, and systemic social justice and economic disparity? Isn't that where we are? Through those three horrific deaths of black persons at the hands of white persons, we are forced to notice again the dramatic evidence of a reality that continues to exist all around us. A reality that has become so normal that we hardly even notice it. Many of us white folks have been shocked out of our complacent complicity into a longing to make a difference. So what do I do? <laughs> Is a, a question that I've heard from numerous white clergy and lay folks over the past few weeks. Here's some suggestions for white Christians from this white Christian who is on the journey with a long way still to go. Resolve to have an open mind and an open heart before reading some things that will be uncomfortable. Start with the threat of blackness. Four black Florida United Methodist pastors speak out, found on the Florida Conference website, and move to options that might include white fragility, white awake, how to be an anti-racist, the devil in the grove letter from Birmingham jail. Ask people of color whom you know for their suggestions and, and then read what they suggest. Watch 13th, a Netflix feature film on YouTube. Hang with it to the end. It, it's a tough watch. Learn to embrace the term white privilege and work to let go of the defensiveness that you will feel at first. Dig into scripture as it relates to the reign of God and the theme of humanity created in the image of God. Expand the reigns of influencers in your life to include people of color and other cultures. Stand up for what you know in your heart is right from the standpoint of the teachings of Jesus, and don't be afraid. Well, I began with a focus on Sabbath, and that's how I want to end. Through a regular time of, of rest and prayer and reflection, the Spirit will fill us for the work to which God calls us in our hurting and broken world. Friends, the God of creation continues to say, let there be light. And the light that shines in the darkness will always continue to shine. May God bless you in the work to which God calls you. Friends, you have been very generous during this difficult time in the life of our nation and our world. 
You have been generous with your time, your gifts, your energy, your spirit. We ask you now to prepare a gift, an offering for your local congregation in the ways available to you to do that. Thank you in advance for your generosity of gifts and your generosity of spirit. As we move into this time of a prayer of thanksgiving, I think about Moses and in that Exodus season when he and the people of Israel, the children of Israel were in the wilderness and Moses so desperately needed to experience God's presence. Just like we've been in this wilderness of the COVID-19 season, we too need to experience God's presence. And the great thing is that God has been with us and God is with us and will continue to be. So will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence that never leaves us. We thank you for your presence in all of our troubles, in all of our joys, and especially in this season. In this season that has shaken us to our very core, God, we thank you that your son, Jesus, always promised to be with us. And so we thank you so much that we are not left alone. We are not orphaned, but instead you come to us and you promise to be Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, there are so many things to find thanks for right now. Thank you for our relationship with you. Thank you for our church that's doing everything possible to engage in the community with our sisters and brothers in Christ. Thank you for our pastors, for our leaders, for our community of faith, God, that is serving the greater community. Thank you for our time when we have been able to be set apart, to step aside and to be quiet in this very different season. And God, we give you thanks for the generosity in which you have showed to be faithful to us. And we are faithful to you with a portion of what you have given to us. We're thankful for the opportunities to serve in very real ways in our community, to hand out food, to provide different services, God, to bring hope to the hopeless. God, we're thankful that, that things are starting to improve, Lord, and we just pray for an improvement in this season. God, we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit that guides us, that directs us, that leads us into understanding, in discernment. We're thankful for our faith in you, Lord. And now God, as we are a people of thanks, we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, we pray. Amen. Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father still feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. They neither spin nor toil. And yet even Solomon, in all of his glory, is not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and is tomorrow thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God, and all of its righteousness, and all of these things are given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. 
for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Thank you for that reading of Matthew 6 by Alex, Jack, and Lily Kate Shanks. I want to reflect very briefly on this uh, beloved passage of Scripture. Uh, I sometimes like to hear the Scripture in different translations. Uh, a, a different translation I love of this passage is from The Message by Eugene Peterson, uh, where he simply uh, appeals to us uh, to notice the birds and the wildflowers. He reminds us that God gives attention to wildflowers and birds and, and that God is always paying attention to us. Then he translates, what I'm trying to get you to do here is to relax. And then he urges us to give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. We're in the midst of a several month pandemic. There has been great suffering and grief, loss and trauma. And yet there have also been opportunities for us to develop new habits and perhaps to see things that we had missed. I have found myself paying more attention to the birds uh, that come into uh, into the neighborhood where I live that are just outside the office where I work. They were, the birds were always there. I just never paid that much attention to them. Now I take the time to, to see them and notice them. So, so the one singular question I wanna pose for us is, um, uh, what does God want us to see during this uh, season? I think God wants us to see that he, that God is present, that God is with us, that God never left us, that through the really difficult times and through the aha moments, God is present. Uh, God is with us. Uh, I think God wants to remind us uh, that we're loved by God. God created each of us, just as God created the the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. God created each of us uh, and that God loves us. God wants us to, uh, to, to know that. Think about your children or, or your grandchildren, if you're a parent or a grandparent, how you love that child or grandchild and how you hope that someday that child or grandchild will know just how much you love them. I think God is, God is the same. God wants us to know that he loves us. In a time of great disruption, this happened in the Old Testament with the burning bush, uh, with the earthquakes, uh, some, somehow we hear God's still small voice. So we want you to know as you worship that God loves you. God created you, God loves you. And we also come to understand in this season that every person we meet on this earth is a person God also created, a person God also loved, and we're interconnected. Uh, a virus teaches us that we're not living in silos. Uh, God has created us for connection and for relationship. And perhaps one of the things we see in this pandemic is uh, that we are connected to every other person and to each other. God loves me, but God also profoundly loves you. And that's our connection. Uh, as the body of Christ, that's our connection that in Jesus, uh, we know this because Jesus has come into the world uh, uh, to share that good news with us. So thank you for being a part of this worship service. I remind you, or I encourage you again, to read Matthew 6, uh, to take some time to notice how God is present. Uh, and I encourage us as we continue to live through this COVID season, to be more, of the aware, more aware of the God who is always with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of peace and hope go with you. And may God's blessings abound for all of creation. For health care workers and first responders. For the most vulnerable among us. For the persons living in poverty with no options for safe living. For sisters and brothers in faraway places. For leaders praying for wisdom and humility. For churches and all the ways we proclaim the gospel and live its message. For our beautiful global community. Bear witness to the love of God. So that to those to whom love is a stranger. We'll find in you generous friends. Amen. Amen.